Hello and welcome to the Third Wheel Podcast, where we will be interviewing extraordinary individuals who are working on the Arkimoto vision. My name is Kenzie. And I'm Tiger. We're your hosts, and this episode is a prototype of sorts, episode zero with Galileo Russell of Hyperchange. He is an investor, an artist, an author, and he is a sitting board member of Arkimoto. We are going to be diving into how he got where he is today and what his vision is for the future. Two. One, welcome into the first episode of the Arkimoto podcast, Name to be Figured Out. I got with me 29-year-old board member of an electric vehicle company, Galley, Galileo. Yeah. Want to give a quick intro of, you know, where you came from, what you're doing? Um, yeah, so my name's Ur Galileo, um, electric vehicle sort of enthusiast and YouTuber. Mm -hmm. And I'm, my whole thing is like investing in companies that are building the future that I believe in. And so, and kind of documenting that journey on YouTube. And I was super passionate about like reducing the emissions of the transportation system by coming up with new technologies. And like, not only saw this as like a change the world needed, but an opportunity to create insanely awesome companies and wealth and technology and jobs and like economic. Like I think oftentimes people get confused with um, social causes and economic and capitalism, they think they can't coexist. And so one of the most beautiful things, or my goal for my career is to show people like actually the entities doing the most good in the world can be corporations. And I know that's kind of a hot take, but like, oh, well, there's a lot of shitty corporations, there's a lot of shitty people, but um, I just, the power of like investing in Tesla and buying a product that supports an essentially a team of people that are the, the smartest engineers in the world to keep building more technology that will proliferate and make the world more sustainable. So I am fascinated by that and, um, you know, fell in love with Tesla, invested in them, uh, followed their journey. And then slowly Arkimoto came on my radar and I was like, wow, this is another cool um, made in the US uh, vehicle company. That's it's a startup. It's fun. It's in Oregon. I'm in Seattle. I'm going to, you know, drive down and check it out. And so um, and I just kind of like fell in love with the mission and the boldness of rethinking how what our cities are, how we get around and like this idea that yes, Tesla is reinventing the car in a lot of ways, but in a lot of ways, they're taking the exact car that we have and just changing what's the technology underneath it. Yeah. They're not changing the form factor of transportation. So I love outside the box, big, bold ideas that have the potential to change the future that we all live in. Like literally, like I don't give a shit about the uh, the idea. Or, should I, not be, um, I don't care about the, <clears throat> I'm like only Scratch passionate that. about, yeah. I'm only passionate about ideas that I think will like really have a big impact and materially change the course of, of like civilization. And I think if you're a great investor, you're really like an anthropologist and understanding how new technologies in the world like is gonna change and influence. And so how do we like distribute these technologies in the best way to create the best future for all of us? And to me, Arkimoto in that lens is like, wait, maybe we have a new type of city where the car is not the VIP, where when I walk outside, it's not just concrete everywhere. So it's gray, which matches the gray sky, which makes yeah. me sad all the time. Like why isn't our streets purple? That's another idea, you know, <laughs> <It's decent laughs> right? Like something fun, like, I don't know. And so just Arkimoto to me is like a bet on this hope that um, we can live a new lifestyle more in harmony with each other, with our communities, with nature, and you're building the technologies and products that do that. And that is, I fell in love with it. And I was like, actually the first video I made about Arkimoto was almost out of cash. I think that's what the thumbnail said. And it was me being like, everyone's telling me to look at Arkimoto stock. And I analyzed the company and I was like, this is super dope, but like I'm a finance guy and they have like a month of money on their balance sheet. And like, this is like, I'm like, guys, like this isn't financially stable. So like, you know, I didn't know too much about the company, but I just knew the financials and Mark commented on that video. So the CEO oh, cool. and like, I just had this really thoughtful comment about everything and explain what was happening at the company. And like, it's like, and I also know that electric vehicle companies are so hard. Like they burn so much money. Tesla was on the cusp of bankruptcy so many times. Like this is like a really like hard business. So I took the time to dive in and I was like, wait, this is different than every other electric vehicle startup. Cause I see so many and I'm super picky. Um, but like these, they actually are gonna get into production. Like this is before Arkimoto had started production. It was okay. like, this is gonna happen. Like the factories here. Um, and so, um, Anyway, I kind of like visited after, long story short, so Mark comments and I'm like, okay, Arkimoto's actually dope. I made another, I think I interviewed him and posted another video and then came down to visit and I was I was super impressed. I like met the community, I met the employees. Mm -hmm. um, like I think it's so easy to just think of it and not see 
this bigger movement because that's really what Arkhamoto is. And like is, at the yeah. we're at the ramp event two twenty two. That's what yeah. this is like, hopefully get, get, like capturing. Yeah. Is yeah, all the people involved in the actual movement growth of <laughs> just believing in this kind of thing. It's such a big picture. Like I loved how you explained it because it is. It's not just we make car. vehicles. It's like yeah, hey, it's we're like, gonna try to rework all of humanity's transportation. Yeah. for now, maybe even more in the future. Uh, that's that's really one cool. thing I watched a recent TED talk about like why Apple's marketing is so good. And it's like, there's three rings. It's like, what, how, and why? And most companies are like, this is what we're doing. And this is how we're going to do it. And they just kind of ignore the why. Whereas like really successful companies are like, this is why we're doing what we do. This is how we're going to do it. And this is what it ends up looking like. And this some big guy, like he, so that was the founder of Free Water, the person who's giving away free water. He's moving into free groceries, free, you know, he's, he's hopefully just going to come up with a system. I Revolutionize. Mean, the, and, and I mean, we're going to be kind of partnering with them on some stuff, which I'm really excited about. Um, and so he's really strong on his whys. And I found some really interesting questions that I'm excited to ask Mark. And, but I'm curious your answer, like why three wheels? I think that's something everyone's dying to know is why reinvent the four wheel vehicle into a three wheel? Um, I think of it kind of like when you go to the store and see a lot of sizes of pants, you're like, well, why is there that size? Well, because somebody that fits somebody <laughs> at this point <laughs> in their life. And then, so I think, you know, the spectrum of vehicles is kind of has a gap where it's like, we need a, a middle size. Yeah, it was two to four. Like we have large <laughs> and small, we don't have medium. Yeah. And I think three wheels to me represents the medium size, which yeah. I actually think could be the biggest and most popular size if done correctly with yeah. the right city layouts. Mm -hmm. And so I just think our cities haven't been designed for that. Um, I don't know. There could also be some sort of first principle physics reason why, but I yeah. I don't know. I'm not an People expert. People listening, in that. when Mark comes on, he can <laughs> actually give like the founder's reason of why he's like three wheels is a must. Because now mm -hmm. the Architrike or the MLM or whatever it's going to be called, I pitched Libike because leaning e bike. Uh, what it, that was announced yesterday, and that also yeah. has three wheels. So I'm like, I'm curious if I, Mark's kind of been pretty hard that no vehicle with four wheels will ever come out. <clears throat> and I'm like, that's a really cool thing. It's like, it's always three wheels. Then this could be the third wheel podcast because it's like, yeah, I love our that. brand will always be three wheels. I'm like, I love that kind of part of it. That's like, that's a really interesting niche to fill. So what's your background? You just kind of mentioned finance. What else was like the driving force? Like what makes you you kind of thing yeah well i actually okay so that's a great question but i wanted to and this big idea steve jobs yeah. what is the most important word like that he comes to mind when he was doing his career this is what i heard uh was like focus and so when i think about companies who else is focused on three wheels like that focus mm -hmm. that you're yeah. saying mark has that to me is why Arkhamoto is the leader in what they're doing and they're focused on something nothing no one else is focused on. So it's like an attention arbitrage. And yeah. I think that is where I invest in businesses. Like that's why I think farming, like there's not very many smart people going into farming. So if you're a smart person that's starting a farming business, you have like a knowledge arbitrage. Mm. So I think in many ways, three-wheeled vehicles have kind of, yeah. Listen, anyway, <laughs> farmers listening to this, what the heck? <laughs> what incarnation is he talking? <laughs> yeah, well, I kind of want to get into the farming I'm, business, I'm sure so I'm, I'm gonna it. I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is on that. We'll nice. see what happens, baby. That's you can do like yeah. the vertical farming in a in a thing. So you, you kind of still are very broad as a person. You're not like you know hardlined into just like YouTubing, investing. You're also looking into venturing because you're also an investor, just in in not even just EV tech stack, right? I just saw a Twitter account that I think is like related to hyperchange. Uh, okay, Hyperguap. Hyperguap. Yeah, it's my VC company. Yeah. yeah, and so how long has that been around? And like, do you just um, invest in like pre-seed companies or like actually? Well, yeah. So I mean, I'm in a, my investor part of like who I am is my internet personality because that's how I figured out how to turn one of my passions into like a business that made my life how I wanted it to be, kind of. And so I love investing. Like I read the Warren Buffett book when I was 14, fell in love, put all my money in an E-Trade account with just like this idea of rolling your snowball. I know it's on like falling in love. What does that mean? But like with this idea that like, I don't know. I feel like I have been in like, like y this idea that you're growing your wealth with this snowball, which is now I'm kind of getting jaded. I'm like, I hate just getting more money on numbers on a screen. That's like really dumb and pointless. Yeah. But that was a powerful thing of like, wow, like I can change my life if I start investing now and the most powerful force in the future is compounding. Yeah. Um, and so I wanna leverage that to my potential and compound at an accelerated rate because I'm finding companies that are changing the world. And I think the world's changing faster than ever and the opportunities to create a company that will rise in value 
faster than ever yeah. is actually changed because now we're all connected. There's 8 billion people, everything's a computer, ideas spread like wildfire. Yeah. I wanna buy fast. some machine to build some shit, I can Google it and start learning it. Like, yeah. the, the so, and and that's all a big economic theory. So I kind of ran into a lot of beef with my like professors at NYU and my teachers, because I was like, the PE ratio is broken. We yeah. live in an era of hyperchange. I literally created this word in this theory, cool. which is a new, and that's why my YouTube channel is called Hyperchange. Like we live in a new economic era, it's sort of like, an economic first principle way of thinking that this rate of accelerating change just extrapolates in perpetuity. Yeah. And that lens is super powerful and to understand how like businesses are changing the world. And so um, I was fascinated by all of that. And I was like, okay, so if Warren Buffett could do it in this boring ass time, yeah. think about the companies that are gonna get <laughs> created possible. now. Yeah. Think about the set, like insane ideas mm -hmm. that are gonna come out and me to be a part of them, to me to own these businesses, to work with these entrepreneurs and scheme with them. And so and what'd like, that look like moving from just being an outside investor to being a board member of Arkhamoto? How'd your relationship with the company switch? Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm trying, I guess I'm going a little too slow maybe, but- um, <laughs> No, you're not going too slow, uh, but we, we, you know, <laughs> it was interesting to hear part of that, but only, yeah. just bring it back to Arkhamoto, it's like, yeah. Because that's probably the relationship you have with most companies you invest in. But Arkhamoto, you're actually kind of like, you know, feet on the ground. So I was curious what that transition looks like. Like, yeah. what is your role as a director kind of look well, like? I think a lot of people listening have never been a director of, you know, a board of directors yeah. kind of thing. And that's why it's, I, I got to get to Arkhamoto because Arkhamoto was easy because I've been doing this a lot, a long time. Like I invest in this company called Jones Soda, which is a Seattle company. And like... I was hella into artisanal sodas. Now I hate soda and I hate like blue, single blue use soda, yes. right? Yeah. Blue and green soda. It's a really okay, fun yeah. brand, but it's yeah. like a chemically sugary product. It's just not a dope future. Not Nobody, good, we don't yeah. need more fucking Jones soda or sorry, or, yeah. <laughs> you know? But like, we don't need more soda. That's my opinion. So yeah, I gave fair. up on that. But like, I went to the shareholder meeting. And so I had all these schemes. My best friend, Julian and I, we were shareholders. Literally nobody shows up to the shareholder meeting. Like people buy stocks. They don't realize like you own a piece of that company. Like yeah. that comes with rights. You have a vote. You can like go to this thing called the meeting and like talk to the company and like they're supposed to like kind of listen to you at that meeting. Cool. So we showed up and like met the CEO. We're like the only person that showed up <laughs> and like got all this cool swag and like like they were just hella impressed. And it was like so fun. And I was like, dude, like I literally scheme with the CEO of Jones Soda. Like she might listen to my idea. Like, and she's so cool. Jennifer Q. She was like kind of like I don't want to say a mentor but like just really cool that she was open-minded enough to accept us so then I was like okay damn like this is fun like I want to do this like you make hella money investing give you an idea my investments go up we change the world together like I'm part of this movement like I don't want to work for a company I want to work with a company and it's kind of a hack around that and so that was kind of the opening doors and then it's just leveling up and I, had, wow. I did it with Tesla and it was super hard to get their attention because they're so big. You can't just show up to their meeting. But now Elon Musk will tweet <clears> back at you. Yeah, and the reason that happened is because my subscribers were like, Gally, you always make jokes about how the earnings call suck and say, you should ask a question. Why don't you ask a question? Like, we'll all vouch for you. And mm -hmm. so they all like bombarded Tesla's IR department. I tweeted <laughs> Elon, he was like, hell yeah. Cool. And then I got on the call and then like, have actually like, we implemented this technology that changed the way that shareholders ask questions, which Tesla still uses today. And Whoa. so, and that's like another example my career is like, I was like, I'm gonna work with this company. I'm gonna get you guys partners with Tesla. What do I want from you? A shitload of stock. Not that I'm paying for it because I'm broke, but when yeah. you sell your company, I wanna yeah. get paid. And so they just sold their company to Robinhood for like 140 million. Wow. So it all happened. And it's Score. like, so that's kind of what I do, how I architect my career. And then so Arkimoto is like, wait, this is super dope. And you're at the stage where I can help. Like I've seen Tesla go through this shit. Like. I feel like I'm, an, I, 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 like media is kind of like my bread and butter. So I want to like give my ideas and it just happened naturally. I would ca call Mark at midnight. I'm like, we're scheming for hours. I'm here for days at a time, like this visiting the factory. This is well, I was involved as I bought a little stock. Okay, so yeah. after I made that video being like, oh my gosh, Mark convinced me. I was like, this is wild. I don't know if it's going to work, but like, I want this to win and I want to support. I'm on team Arkimoto because nice. I think they're on team earth. How many years ago? Was you know, this? Yeah. Um, just for like a time frame reference. 2017 or 18. Okay, it's so like four years ago, you had a little bit of stock. You're talking yeah. to Mark and you're starting to like come down and see him. Exactly, often. exactly. And then it just kept building momentum and like more and more connections happened. Like I want to introduce you to this homie, Mark. I want to introduce you to my homie, Sandy Monroe, because I like, he has so much automotive industry expertise that's like exactly the secret sauce that Arkhamoto almost doesn't have because we're in Eugene, we're a startup. I love that DNA, but a little bit of grizzled Detroit auto industry veteranship, yeah. if the vibes work, is going to be a magical combination. So I introduced them, they hit it off. Nice. That's a super dope initiative that happens. Um, and just like, and then I kind of was like, Mark, they had an opening for the board of directors, and I was like, Mark, like, let's make this official. Like, I want to, like, I'm already scheming with you, I already feel like I'm 
doing my job as an like I was kind of like <laughs> being his an advisor for years without being an advisor, just as like a shareholder. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm still like, you know, in my own career, I'm trying to decide like, is that the best use of like, cause legally I have to be careful with what I say if I'm a board member, which is a very different relationship with my other investments. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, am I more useful as a YouTuber mm -hmm. or am I more useful as a board member? Like yeah. that's something I'm still figuring out in my career or like how to balance that. Cause I think we're kind of in uncharted territory and like yeah. Arkimoto took a hella big chance and was like, like putting a YouTuber when I was 27 on their board of directors of like a public company, like that was kind of different and yeah. out there. But probably not that many directors who also have massive YouTube channels. It's probably not something like, hey, we have to be worried about what this person says publicly. In like yeah, a little like call with lawyers yeah. to like, yeah. Do you have to put uh, YouTube videos that you make on, on your channel through lawyers to like, hey, is everything here? Good. Um, well, I'll just call John, who's awesome. He's our lawyer. I don't know. You should have him on this podcast. But yeah. um, he's so I love John. He's like <laughs> one of the legal team. And like, yeah. so I'll just scheme with him. Like, I'm going to talk to Mark. Like, like, what can I say or whatever? Um, John Dorbin? Yeah. Nice. Or John Dorbin. Yeah. You <laughs> yeah. Know. yeah. Yeah. Well, I know his daughter. His daughter uh, also makes TikToks and she suggests us uh, a YouTuber. So it's it's very exciting. I'm, I'm, I mean, he doesn't live in Oregon, but I'm looking forward to meeting him someday. Mm. Yeah, no, he was here for the 222. Oh, so that's I why I ran into him. Yeah. Bummer. A lot of folks. Yeah, too many folks to meet, honestly. Someone uh, at Sandy Monroe or Monroe and Associates that I really like is Michael Oaks. We're starting to give each other book recommendations, which is exciting. The two books were How to Win Friends and Influence People and The Celestine <laughs> Prophecy. Have you read either of those? They blew my mind. You should go home with a copy of one of them. You get to pick yeah. which one you want. <laughs> um, I don't read, though. But I read. appreciate that. Okay, no, yeah. I, like I won't read it. Like okay, that's but, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. At least you're honest. You know, I love <laughs> like, the honesty. Every, yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm a reader, and that's like, been a year since then. Um, but it's that's the most fascinating part. Is, yeah, like, you can give the me the spark notes now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll take the summary. <laughs> at at two twenty two, kind of what um, made it like, gal, you got to come on the podcast tomorrow. Let's do the first episode of the Arkmo podcast. Is like at the two twenty two event, there wasn't enough time to speak to all the brilliant people who were really like invested and loved the company. So it's like, okay, let's take the time factor away. If everyone's here in one, what like one spot for a couple hours it's like people can listen to it in their own time if they can't come to eugene they can still like listen in and be a part of it and understand like why people believe in this company so much and everyone's gonna have different answers mm -hmm. all the way from the board to like luke and erica potentially coming on um in a couple hours to like work like everyone's and maybe an investor will come on someday you know like someone who's been like i've been an investor for like four years i'd be like love to see like hey what's been your a shareholder, a shareholder and a yeah. customer too yeah like, customer. i think there's I, I love the idea of this podcast because it's just authentic like telling people the truth about what's happening and just like kind of sharing this little world that Arkimoto is. And I think, yeah, yeah there's just so many characters. I feel like there's it is so like many. a TV show every time I come and visit, like in the coolest way of like, yeah. everyone is such a character. Everyone's so passionate about Arkimoto. Um, everyone is just like kind of a good person. And um, I don't know, I just think it's like a unique, there's not many yeah. causes in the world that I think bring people around something that's mm -hmm. optimistic. Yeah. and something that's brighter like when you look at all these causes in the news like people are meeting for this and that it's like i think we need to like have more organization around positive things that we're all doing together that we want to achieve not negative things that divide us yeah and arkimoto to me is like a community that represents that and i think that's so powerful and that's why i'm like you know it's stoked to share that on the podcast kind of that is exciting again that's just kind of goal make it less coveted because right now it's like unless you you kind of flew to Oregon for this event. It's like, there's no chance you can meet any of these people. But like when you were there, didn't you like, you almost wanted to leave a conversation with one person, like make sure you talk to this other person before they fly back to DC or before oh they fly Oh my back. God, yeah, mingling, like, I'm so bad at mingling. Really? Like, it's like, well, I'm like, I think I'm actually hella good at mingling, but it's like, I'm hard, it's like. <laughs> All right, let's be honest. Uh, let's be honest, yeah. right, I'll be I'll keep I real. Like, no. yeah. But you gotta like, it's like, oh, my drink's getting, you know, like, oh, gee, uh, you know, like I wanna, yeah. I wanna say hi to everybody. Like, everybody. and I wanna talk to everybody and like tell them thank you for like all their hard work and like all this awesome stuff and just like, um, yeah, it was really cool. It felt like a Tesla event. That's what I was telling Mark. Like awesome. it really like, um, it had this feeling of like so much excitement at the ramp event. And I don't, I don't know. I was, I was like, I was kind of impressed. Like I knew oh, what it was. Yeah. And I'm part of Arkimoto and I sat and I was watching it and I was getting hella inspired. Yeah, and yeah. something. And I, was, I was up till four in the morning yeah. last night. Yeah, you I guys, didn't sleep the night you before were both working so much on like, I know you guys are grinding on that. Like Tiger, you, they couldn't even come to the party. I don't know. Like does that, that makes me sad because I wanted to hang out with you guys. And now you couldn't even come to the party because Came like home, you were so tired. Woke like, up and like, all right, now we'll go. Yeah. Um, but that's the crazy thing about that event is that can hypothetically never happen in the exact way again because that place is going to be filled up with mass manufacturing. Like we can't have a ramp event again because it'll be completely filled up with, hey, we're making vehicles in there, but there was like a little 
spot where there was like a week span for them to set up and then a day for them to have an awesome event in a massive warehouse really and cool. just show the public, hey, this is going to be filled up with our mass production. It's like, holy cow, like other events will have to be back at PIR or like a racetrack or like, you know, other cool places. But it was phenomenal to just witness. To be that, in there. Yeah, to be that little sliver of time. Yeah. And so it was awesome that it was live streamed and stuff like that. And I mean, obviously it was big enough to, to call people from all around the country to go. Um, What do you see as the most exciting thing on Arkimoto's kind of like horizon aside from the the mean lean machine the trike the arca trike um i think the ability to keep making more vehicles and making them better mm -hmm. and just getting them in the hands of more people that's what excites me and like seeing a lot of fubs in one place like seeing the rental operations be used um seeing people drive around on the streets like i just think that brings the movement to life in a way that's hard to explain when you see somebody driving a fub it's yeah. like a crazy feeling it's really cool <laughs> like i, mean, I am in the future like we the world is changing a little bit i just saw it i swear yeah like <laughs> and it's, it's so i i'm excited for that to keep spreading that's a great way to put it because living in eugene we see it all the time here in the whitaker we're like a couple blocks away from the factories and it's like whoa we see you know there's a lot of fub owners it's like here part of eugene. daily life it's normal you're yeah, like oh he's fubbing and Go. the other time that happened was in san francisco when we went we're like oh there's a fair amount because there's go-cars down there that rent some out and it's like there's a couple hubs where it's like starting to grow and as you think of that like potential customers around the cities where it's starting to grow it's kind of like a snowball effect like with your investing earlier it's like the more people eventually you will go out of your house and you see three fubs in a day you're going to be like okay i want i want to be one of those people that really draws my attention so it's exciting that like knowing having it out there is the best advertisement for the own product you know mm -hmm. it's exciting well and that's kind of a big theory that i have about like marketing and this new i hate advertising and i think advertising is actually like really backfiring for a lot of big brands because it's all about just like telling your story authentically with content. Mm -hmm. And just, I feel like that's such a big um, like push. So people will pay so much money to advertise, like look how many impressions we got, look at this and what did they click or did, and then it's like, wait, like if you just see a fub driving, how mm -hmm. many impressions is that? And yeah. like, like, dude, I'm not, I don't tell people about what ad I see on my phone, but I tell people about Ever. some cool thing that happened in the world. Like, I'm like, oh, like, wait, I saw this cool thing. Like I freaked out. I, if anything, I'm about to take a video of it and post yeah. it and blow you up organically to all my homies. Yeah. Like that's, um, so I think that flywheel will really work in Arkimoto's favor. And that's how Tesla blew up is all referrals and like word of mouth. And that's yeah. how good products happen. And Arkimoto has a little bit of a learning curve because it's so new. Mm -hmm. It's so different. Like I actually like products where the biggest flaw in the product is that people aren't educated about it because mm -hmm. I think that's surmountable. And I always bet on humans becoming smarter. Yeah. And so I think like Arkimoto if anything, is just so much where the puck is going mm -hmm. versus where the puck is that that's why a lot of people miss it. But yeah. That's why I'm the most excited about this podcast is Mark's sitting here and I get to ask him a question. We can make a TikTok out of that. And then that's how people can get informed and like learn about it is like the CEO himself telling these good questions rather than me just with a phone, like recording Mark saying something comes off kind of like there can be a nice green screen of a fub driving behind him. Like yeah. We need to get like an hour long video yeah. of a fub just driving forward, fub like real. just, um, you know, back a cameo, which is the one with the back seating for camera and just some, a, drive, a fub could be driving Forrest at someone. Yeah, bro. exactly. So Beautiful. that could be the background for like some episodes. We're quite excited. Mm. I don't know what I'm going to do for yours because we don't have the footage quite yet. And I want to get this episode out. Get yeah, no, started. my number two. Well, up the production value when yeah. I come back on episode yeah. 100. But you're setting the tone for this whole thing. I think we're about a half hour in. She'll know. Is and this I think good? That's, yeah. Are doing okay? What do you What do you think would be a good amount of time for a for an Arkimoto podcast? Um, I always think uh, you should just do it until you're bored. Yeah. And that's the best way to do it. Well, you never get bored talking to people like you when Luke comes on. How would I ever? I mean, how would you ever get Luke's bored? Luke's gonna go crazy. He's gonna go I'm wild. Excited. And and that's the, the yeah. weird thing is like talking with some people who aren't like as a board member, you're kind of vetted. You talk with John Dorbin, you know the lawyer. But mm -hmm. like some people, the company, and maybe I won't air it. But like, what if they get too in depth about a part of the company where it's like, hey, that's not public info. This epi like episodes of the show well, might actually have to go through lawyers. You know? I mean, bleep it out or whatever, or edit it out. But yeah. don't scratch the episode dude, for it it's i some i just like it's just the wrong mindset of like tesla they don't care they don't that was their Elon Musk goes wild dude they want you to like talk and say as much and that's why they literally never spend a dollar on marketing and it's genius it is and so and everyone knows i think what tesla the more is. you <laughs> share what's what secret are we trying to keep we're trying to get people to know about arkimoto like why are we taking it out because it's yeah. exciting 
like because this was a juicy <laughs> gossip, a juicy detail that people actually cared about. So yeah. we'll take that out. But it's like the, <laughs> if, if we were, I don't talking, know. If we're on but here, sometimes I like. Okay. Not, it's not always like that. But yeah, sometimes, no. like I think that kind of like, um, I don't know. I Just like to like manufacture drama a lot sometimes <laughs> too. Drama. Like I think it's genius. Like I think like take a page out of the Kardashians and Jake Paul's playbook. Like. Yeah. Like why? Like get well, like honestly. like people do these crazy things for attention with no good cause behind them. So yeah. you have a good cause. You already have the the we have the hole in one. So let's start getting crazier with like the shots you take for people to look at that hole in one that you already know is a hole in one. It's just they're not like watching because they don't care and it's not exciting maybe or like I don't know. I try and think about ways of how do you get like the holy grail of this viral marketing moment, you yeah. know? And that's. So probably dissecting Tesla, which is what you've been doing for like, how long you've been following Tesla, like eight years. Yeah, I've actually been following Tesla for like over a decade. So like I'm super like long term. So you know exactly the wow. whole playbook. For like 15 years. Honestly. That's really exciting. I mean, that's like the most key thing to have on the board mm -hmm. member of a new electric vehicle company. I say new. It's kind of been around for 14 years, but it's still relatively new in the terms company, of a vehicle we're new. company. Yeah. It's like a startup. Like yeah. Arkimoto is a, it's a startup. Like yeah. it feels like a startup like. And I always think of things as a startup of like, is your business model at maturity at some mm. level? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like um, you have different arcs. Companies are kind of like arcs. So arcs come at like some companies are very small arcs. Like, you know, what are you? I don't want to call that homie out. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like I'm like, yeah, I don't know if it's a big arc on, the, on your company because it's a tiny product. That's mm -hmm. cute. But like mm -hmm. Tesla is a big arc. Arkamoto is a big arc. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, yeah, it takes if I'm if I'm making um, um, cups or something like that's a small arc. Mm -hmm. But if I'm making a car, like it's, so that's was kind of a misconception of, of Tesla and companies and Arkimoto is, are they burning capital? Mm -hmm. So some companies are burning capital, but I think Arkimoto is investing capital. We're not burning capital. We're investing yeah. in equipment and people and mm -hmm. products Requiring that will create technology. a return. It's yeah. just, it takes a long time. So Tesla was burning capital for all these years, mm -hmm. but now those were actually all investments that now have created insane cash flow. Mm -hmm. And so, Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. What's it? Yeah, no, <laughs> no, that was it's, really it's insightful. Honestly, about. like it's it's cool to hear from someone who's really into finance and like companies and having them break it down in a way that's digestible. So it's yeah. good. I like that arc example. It's it's fun when people get it. So yeah. you, you you really like shooting for them and like people with big ideas who really want to change the world. Yeah, I love that. I love that's why I connected with Mark because there's very few people who will sell their company for like millions and millions of dollars and make millions of dollars yeah. and still try really hard. That's talking something. about his old, he's not selling, but that's about talking about selling garage games. He's, yeah, his, so he uh, sold his, his software company. He'll, yeah. he'll tell you about it, right? Yeah. Marble, like, like I, and I'm like, it's just to have the like, I don't want to say like humbleness or like not pride, but like to just say, I'm going to suck at this and I'm going to start, but I want to do it because I want to see this change in the world. Like, dude, you, I have so much respect for that. Nobody, most people don't do that. 99% no. of people will never do it. 99.9999999 will never do it. So that's why like when people hate on Elon or Mark or entrepreneurs taking big bets, doing really hard things that might fail, you like how, like that's the lifeblood of humanity's progress. Absolutely. So Mark, when I just have so that, much respect for that. He could have lived comfortably on a beach for the rest of his life, but instead he decided to do a very difficult <laughs> thing, which is bring a new vehicle yeah. into reality and take it like, and actually just work his ass. I mean, he works more than anyone I've ever seen. Like, like he's never not person. thinking about it. No, he literally breathes. He Arkham lives Arkham. it. Yeah. Like, I think everyone yeah. at 21 is like, I want to be a CEO. And then I see one, I'm like, that's your life. That's not even just your job at that point. Like he is working yeah. 24 seven. I was like, holy cow, do I have that and in me? I'm like, I'm really happy in the media. You know, Anyone who ever says they want to be a CEO is they not an entrepreneur Yeah, because you don't want to be a CEO. You want to do something that changes the world. And then you get forced to become a CEO because you're leading a business, which is really just a movement of people creating that change that was too big for one person to do, yeah. but you wanted it. So it's like, that's, I think Arkimoto like, I don't know. It just gets me really inspired about that new idea and the potential and like companies taking these big bets. Like I think the government should, and even like me, like I, you know, I'm, I, I, I get compensated a little Arkimoto stock for my board position, but I take it all in stock, zero cash. Like I worked for Arkimoto for years. I didn't get paid. I put money in the company as an investor. Like it's, I'm here because I wanted to help this and mm -hmm. I really believe in it, and I wanna see this change happen in the world, and that's Absolutely. my like number one factor for being involved with Arkimoto. And that's everyone, because Mark exemplifies it so much, like Kenzie and I are like, it's 11 at night, and we're just, we've been talking about Arkimoto for the past hour, scheming and planning yeah. stuff, and then you see it with everyone, like everyone at the company loves and believes in it so much that I'm like, this needs to be shared. People, I need to have yeah. 
every yeah. employee coming and explaining like how invested they are in the company because you just start living in it and you're like everyone around me really believes in it and it's like man it's almost like still kind of like you know those people go out and they have friends and they talk about it and stuff like there needs to be a, like an antenna where anyone who's kind of interested and they're like yeah i've heard about the company but like i want to see the lifeblood of it because employees are the lifeblood of a company and if they're all kind of like oh you know maybe there's like a paragraph you can read about our cto or, or you know all these different people but actually hearing the C-suite and then every employee speak is a whole nother level of like, whoa. You know, if you have people that are so built on the why of like why they're doing this, then uh, what's the thing? Then the how doesn't matter. Like, you know, they will make it work if mm -hmm. everyone who's at the company is that invested like emotionally and just like they really believe in it. I think that's the most important part of a company and Arkimoto has it. I've been on a lot of companies that don't. And yeah, then, you know, most I'm, companies. Do. Yeah. And I yeah. wouldn't start up a podcast with those companies. Cause I'm like, oh, all the employees kind of like don't really like working here. But they're then my Arkimoto, paycheck, they're here for a like, paycheck. But Arkimoto, everyone's like they're in it. So I'm like, this is really cool. And this should be shown to people. Absolutely. Showcase for sure. Yeah. And I think um, this is like another comment, but the whole like anthropologist change that we need in the world. Like, I think our government should be doing stuff like Arkimoto. Like, this is kind of why I got involved. Like, I don't care what the entity is structured like or what it is, but it's just this idea that like, we need to develop this technology that is a more efficient way to get humans from point A to B. Yeah. So how do we focus our resources to innovate on this, to solve this pressing problem? Yeah. And like, Arkimoto is that package. And so these are the things I look at of like our like our government spends so much money and we don't we're not creating any of these cool new technologies that are building the future. So I don't know mm -hmm. if when people in the past were alive, the government was do cool stuff. I don't know. That's not our generation. Like <laughs> yeah. they like built the highways. Like I heard they did that. And built I was like, Hoover that must have been like exciting. Like <laughs> yeah. they were like, dude, we're going to like build all these things called highways and like connect the cities and you'll be able to like drive to a city and like have lunch there. And like something yeah. new was going to happen in America that made it better. We're going to build the like, biggest dam in the what, world. We're have we, have yeah, yeah, like we're all going to have clean energy. We're going to like <laughs> do this. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like that's why I really like the Mars thing. Because it's to me, that's a way like that'll make so many advances that will help Earth technology wise mm -hmm. as a forcing function for innovation. Yeah. But it's also a cause we can rally around. Like we were talking about before recording, like being on Team Earth. Yeah. Like everyone's roots for sports. Like if you're a sports fan, sorry, I have a hot take, which is I don't really care for sports that much. I used to care about the Seahawks. I used to be obsessed with the Seahawks. And then I was like, guess what? The Seahawks don't matter compared to climate change. Like I have a much bigger underdog to root for. I love rooting for the underdog. The biggest underdog you can root for in the world right now is clean, clean, t clean technology that will actually solve climate change. It's yeah. like, I feel like we're literally watching a hit, like the fourth quarter play. There's 10 seconds left on the clock. We are either going to win or we're going to get screwed by climate change and we have like 80 yards to go and we need to hit this Hail Mary. Yeah. And it's like, it's everything. It's like Tesla. It's Arkimoto. It's all these innovations. It's like getting rid of plastic water bottles. It's like electric airplanes. It's like new ways to grow food that's less impactful. Like mm -hmm. all of this stuff. Um, yeah. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful way to end it. I mean, yeah. uh, people can reach out to you on Twitter. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. yeah. They can hit me up on Twitter and yeah, go Arkimoto. Thank beautiful. you for including me as a guest. This Thank you legendary. for, Thank you for helping it. set the tone for this whole show. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you when you come into Eugene next in six months and we'll be at episode 50, you know, and you come back on. Wow. I hope you like kill it with this podcast and it does awesome. And I think there's, it's a really, I think you're onto something dope and there's so many beautiful stories to tell in the Ar like Arkimoto community. I can't wait to like tune in. It's just so people who, who can listen, the actual how this like does on YouTube is small fish it's how clips of this because we can get 10 clips of you being really excited talking about it those being tiktoks instagram reels and youtube shorts that's what we're expecting to like really make it so this is a way of getting well, people to genuinely organically just say a, a clip instead of like hey say that thing again exact yeah and then you know people from there might like and it enough that they go listen to the episode but not a lot of people listen to 30 minute episodes your like metric YouTube's. shouldn't be like views or likes it should be how much of the truth can we get out yeah. We want to get more more of the truth out about Arkimoto, about Absolutely. the people that work for Arkimoto, about what, the cool stuff Arkimoto is doing. That's our metric for success. Yeah. The internet will lean into that truth at its own pace, at its own level. Mm. Don't let that dictate like your guiding principle. Like yeah. you have to have a north, whenever you start something with new content, you have to have a north star. If you don't have a north star, you'll get lost in the sauce. It's so hard. It's so sauce. hard. Gucci Mane, but um, <laughs> well, seriously, it's a chapter in Gucci Mane's autobiography. It's incredible. Like, I feel like I really like relate to that. And so I don't know. Um, <laughs> don't get lost in the sauce, but um, North star sauce. sauce. Okay. So yeah. yeah, your North star, like mine is I'm documenting my investing journey. Yeah. So that's like super North star for hyper change. Like, so that's like, I get a leaked Tesla battery cell, like shit, like 
I have a lot of Tesla stock. Like yeah. this is really important to my investing diary. And I'm a net Tesla investor and I got their top secret battery cell. You don't think I'm losing my like, I'm yeah. losing it. I'm like Holy so God. excited. I'm like, oh my God, like I got to tell everybody like this is so exciting. Like, and it's like, oh, am I leaking it? Am I breaking the law? Like, is Elon going to be pissed? Like, I don't want to piss off Tesla. They're my homies. Am I just helping them by spreading the word about this? Like that. It's like, nah, what's my North Star? I need to just document my journey. And like, I think. So the North Star of this podcast is it telling the truth about Arkhamoto with these stories of people who work there and are part of the community. Like yeah. that'll always be like, yeah. Beautifully put. Yeah. I love it. Thanks very much for coming on the show. I'll put yeah. your, uh, your- Sorry for rambling. No, yeah, I'll put your Twitter in the bio. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank Take you guys. Look out. Bam. Good Bye stuff. everybody. Bye.